Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another day, another podcast, another topic we should talk about. We're going to go even deeper today. I kid you not, everybody. We're going even deeper. Now, I want to talk about a very special concert, not any concert around the world. Not a, just like a regular concert you go to and pay your ticket to see and that's pretty much it and you pay your own food. No, this is not just any concert around the world. This is a Live Aid concert from 1985, if you can believe it. 1985 was a terminal year, uh, if a lot of people would say. 1985, the person responsible for the Live Aid concert is Bob Gildoff. You have to ask Bob Gildoff. He was the uh, guy that really got this going. Uh, the people, uh, they saw the people in Ethiopia, they're starving. Here in the United States and Canada, we don't have that sort of thing. We don't go, we don't have our people go starving. Because, um, because uh, 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 that's why we have grocery, uh, grocery stores to, uh, to uh, things that we can uh, uh, grow out of our house, uh, outside our houses to our buildings, stuff like that. But Rushi, Rushi, what I say is if you're, if you have a farm, that's great because you can grow your own food and you don't have to go to the supermarket. Uh, but that being said, we're only going to talk about the Live Aid concert. Now, the Live Aid concert, if people don't know, it was a charity event. This whole proceeds were going to go to Ethiopia. Uh, so they uh, offered their time, is what they would say. They offer their time to do the concert and the money goes to, as they say, to charity. Uh, they give you the 1-800 numbers. I, I kid you not, folks. In those days, you didn't have the internet. You didn't have uh, YouTube. You didn't have Twitter to tweet out. So Live Aid concerts were done through uh, 1-800 numbers. It, it give your money out to the Ethiopia. It, they wish you say every dollar goes to a worthy cause. Remember that. And uh, so go ask Bob Gildoff if, he, if he's still alive to this day. Ask Bob Gildoff, he did the massive concert, not just 85, but 2005, 25 years later, they did it again, the second time. But this time in 2005, they had the people of that day. They, uh, they kind of tribute to their time to do this uh, charity concert. And it was like going to be the who is who is going to show up kind of thing to the concert. I mean... Of the band members. Who's going to show up on the band members? And there was like a long list between A and Z who's going to show up. These were uh, rock groups around the world, just not locally, but worldwide. It could be Bono for U2. Um, it could be uh, anybody. Any big name rock star will show up to do this charity. And they would tribute you their, their time uh, and... They would pay tribute to... Uh, well, they wouldn't pay tribute. It was a charity event. Big charity rock concert. Not regular concert. You go to pay your ticket and buy your own food. Well, this uh, event was dedicated for charity. It was going to Ethiopia. Remember that. It was going to Ethiopia at the time. These people in other countries were going hungry. This is not like your average Canadian and American places where we go to a supermarket and uh, get our own food there by buying it. Good, good food, we buy, essentially that. Um, and we don't go starving. We don't have our people in Canada or the United States go starving. So I'm going to do this in podcast to a justice. I'm going to do it justice by saying in those early days, Bob Gildoff was the person around the world to do a, a charity concert, not just any charity concert, 24-hour Charity concert. I kid you not. At the time, it was, it was state of the art, as they say, state of the art. And it was going to go all the uh, twenty four hours. It was almost going to go twenty four hours with this charity event all around the clock. I kid you not. It was all, like a twelve hour concert, and the money was. Uh, I kid you not, people. It was going to go to Ethiopia, in the other color world, and. It, at the time, we didn't have Donald Trump to uh, put in the, uh, uh, as they say, uh, trillions of dollars. The money that the people were going to tribute at that concert were going to go to Ethiopia. Uh, now, it's 34 uh, years ago that actually happened. I kid you not, I did it on the calculator. 34 years ago. And, um, and I really, really want to hammer this down. Because uh, uh, it's almost coming up to 35 years ago since a 1985 Live Aid concert actually happened. It was, at the time, a steady yard 
uh, 24-hour live broadcast around the world for a charity, big rock concert charity event, Juggernugger kind of thing. And it was going to be the who is who is going to show up. I mean, any, uh, you know, live acts, live performance acts are going to be there to A to Z. I mean, these were the people of the day, like Brian Adams to your, uh, to uh, any famous rock singer that was out there in the world today. I uh, was going to show up to, uh, they were going to attribute their time, their effort to put on a good concert. And they're either going to play their songs or they're going to attribute the songs to the, uh, so like I say, it was to who was who. And I want to hammer down on this and go a little deeper about this. Uh, but it was a, a big success because it was broadcast around the world, not just locally, around the world. It was 20, it was going on to 24 hours. I kid you not. At the time, it was stayed here 24 hours. People in those days didn't think what 24 hours would be like. But people were going to do this. I mean, 24 hours a day, uh, it was like 12 to 12, uh, 12 noon to 12 midnight. All the way through the, uh, like almost 24 hours. But anyway, I want to hammer down that a lot of people did see it, including me. It was at the greatest time. Um, there were some uh, mic. Uh, there were mic, some mic problems. Uh, they, they had their share. Uh, sh their sh fair share of mic problems. I mean, sometimes you didn't hear the uh, singers quite often, or they would have problems with the audio. Um, something would have gone wrong. Maybe they don't want their concert to be shown on the disc. Uh, there's many reasons why they uh, they don't. Uh, they don't attribute to the uh, uh, the DVDs. They had DVDs years later about this big concert. Um, the BBC, I think the BBC did broadcast the uh, the Live Aid concert from 1985. The BBC, you can ask the BBC broadcaster about those Live Aid concerts. I think they have the cassette tapes. In those days, they either used Betum or uh, VCS. They call the VCS the... Uh, and they would go live. They would go live. It was like the one airing. It was like the one airing. Uh, lucky for a lot of people in those days, they had VCRs. They didn't have uh, discs they have today. But in those days, people had VCRs. If you're lucky and you had a sterile VCR, you could record this thing. And uh, sometimes the VCRs would have built-in tuners. I kid you not, built-in tuners for the TV stations. Uh, and then you could easily uh, record them to your VCR tapes, and you can keep them as long as long as you want until it gets raced. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're lucky enough, you can record it. And remember, it's a 24-hour uh, charity event, big charity rock concert, and it was uh, shown in uh, other places. Wembley Stadium, remember that uh, big stadium, Wembley Stadium. Huge stadium at the time, very huge stadium. It could hold almost a billion people at the time. It was a big, huge stadium. If you saw the uh, of the aerial shots from the uh, helicopter, it's a it's a massive stadium. So Wembley Stadium, and I think the other place that they broadcast out of was uh, uh, Cape Coronado, uh, whatever it was. Uh, second location, they did a second location. Not the they didn't do the concert. At Wembley Stadium, the whole rest of the time, they did another location with the second uh, live airing. Um, so the, it was a big charity event. And the money was going to go to you know where. Um, and the people uh, just put their hard earned money to this big charity thing. And the money would go to a worthy cause, as they always say. Every money that you have, they would say in these charity, uh, uh, this is a it was broadcast over a TV station the worldwide at the time. It was, uh, as people would say, it was state of the art at the time. 34 years ago. And uh, and I just want to tell you, it was 1985, July, I think it was July 11th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, July, uh, July 11th, 1985, when the concert was first broadcast. Uh, and uh, guess who was there? Not only... Everybody was there. Uh, uh, Princess Diana was there as well. And Prince Charles. It was a big, huge concert. They, they made it out to be a big concert in 1985. Uh, people still can go 
and uh, uh, buy this uh, Live Aid concert from 1985, and the money goes to charity. And I kid you not. So anyway, like I said, anybody who wants to tribute their time, their effort to uh, put out their their songs, and the money will go to, you know, charity thing. And they did. It, it went like 24 hours. It was, at the time, it was state of the art. 24 hours. No one ever heard of going 24 hours in those days. But they did. I mean, uh, they, uh, and they do it through a 1-800 number for charity events. And they really push the effort of, uh, uh, they usually say, every money, every bit counts. They would say, put the money into it. Every money will go to, you know, so-and-so. It's just a charity event. It's just a big, huge charity event. All right. Anyway, that's the old today. And uh, the Bob, Bob Gildoff, let me just mention his name again. Bob Gildoff was the guy to get it started. I kid you not. If he's still alive, to, if Bob Gildoff is live today, ask him about that. Uh, and um, yeah, I hope to see another one in my due time. And uh, yeah, so if you want to tribute your time, your charity event, you can do it through Bob Gildoff if you can. He's the guy who got this whole thing started. And um, I just want to say thank you for everybody for tributing this. And I think I think there was a. My takeaway, my last uh, thoughts of this, I think was pretty good. My friend at the time was watching this thing as well as everybody else. It was a live broadcast around state-of-the-art equipment and broadcast this thing around the world uh, for satellites around the world to TV stations to actually broadcast this thing. And the BBC, as they say, the BBC, the British, you know, the British broadcast people, air this thing because uh, uh, remember it was at Wembley Stadium big huge stadium in London, England I kid you not a big huge stadium I kid you not people you go check this stadium out it's a big humongous stadium uh, many concerts have played there including Guns N' Roses if you can believe that and it holds millions of people. If you if you've seen concerts ever there at Wembley Stadium, it's huge. It the stadium it's very much huge. If you've seen concerts there at Wembley Stadium, from the uh, camera angles, it's very huge. It can hold a lot of people, as far as I know. Um, and by the way, by the way, it's an outdoor uh, arena, not an indoor arena. So it's out with the elements, as they say. Expect the unexpected. When you go into these stadiums, these big, huge stadiums, expect the unexpected because it's open air stadiums. It's not a closed stadium. It's not a dome stadium. It's an open air stadium, and uh, so it could rain, snow, you name it. It could be really hot. Expect the unexpected in this open air stadium. You're out, basically out with the elements. Uh, so. You know, it's like open air stadium. It's not like a dome like stadium, where you didn't have to worry about the weather, snow, rain, you name it. You're in a dome. It'll protect you from the elements, as they would say. Uh, but the. Uh, uh, but anyway, anyway, I want to say for the, uh, for my last two thoughts, my two cents on this, and I yield back, just like the Senate would say, uh, for my uh, two minutes now or my five minutes. I yield back, and I will tell everybody on YouTube, this will be a topic about Live Aid Concert, 1985, July of that year. And 34 years later, I kid you not, folks, I calculated, 34 years later, going on. And Bob Kildoff was the guy who really got this going. I kid you not, folks. Anyway, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for my thoughts and feelings. And uh, I yield back, just like the Senate people would say, uh, for two minutes or five minutes or whatever minutes it is. I, I take 10 minutes. Anyway, never mind. I thought I'd put that in, in the YouTube video. I yield back, everybody, uh, for five minutes. And uh, I don't care if it's nobody's here or not. I yield back. And... Uh, I speak, uh, thank you, Speaker, by the way. Thank you for uh, noticing me, Speaker. Thank you. Anyway, anyway, I just want to say 
Thank you very much for listening. This is a, a topic about 1985 Live A Content with Bob Gildoff. Thank you, everybody, for this podcast. See you on the Knox podcast. This is a wonderful podcast. I really enjoyed it. And uh, we'll put that as a title of this YouTube video. And um, I yield back. And see you guys on the next podcast. Ciao for now.